Hi everyone and welcome back to another Continuous Time Linear Systems video. The purpose of this video is to review the Continuous Time Fourier Transform of periodic signals. As an example, we'll take this impulse train signal S of t that I've sketched here. So our goal is to find S of j omega, which is the Fourier transform of S of t, the Continuous Time Fourier Transform of S of t. So how do we find the continuous time Fourier transform of a periodic signal? Well, it's a two-step process, and here are the steps. So the two-step process consists of first finding a continuous time Fourier series representation for the signal, and then using this general relationship where we take the Fourier series representation, say for a generic signal x of t, it consists of an infinite sum, an infinite weighted sum of complex exponentials, um, and that maps over to an infinite sum of delta functions, where we get one delta function for each of the complex exponentials in the Fourier series. Um, and <clears throat> they're scaled by 2 pi a sub k, where a sub k are the Fourier series coefficients over here. So this is the general procedure that we use, and that's what we're going to use to explore the continuous time Fourier transform of this signal. So in step one, we first need to define and come up with the continuous time Fourier series. And so the first question is, what is the fundamental frequency omega zero? Uh, and so here we remember that omega zero is two pi over the period. Um, the period for this signal here, we see that the signal repeats every t seconds. So the period is t, so omega zero is simply two pi over t. And now a sub k, we have an equation that defines the Fourier series coefficients. And specifically, that equation is um, that we have uh, 1 over t, the integral over one period of the signal, s of t, times e to the minus j k omega 0 t. And we're integrating with respect to the time variable. So we integrate over a single period of the signal s of t. It can be any of these periods up here. So that's what we're going to do to find the a sub k coefficients. OK, so I've recopied this integral that I'm computing over here. And I've just replaced s of t in the integral by its value. Right? I'm only integrating over this one period. And the period I'm integrating over last between 0 and t. So that's the period I'm integrating over. Uh, again, I could integrate over any period I want to along here. So I'm just substituting in. Now I can simplify this integral a little bit. The a pulls outside, um, so that's easy to do. So I get a over t, the integral from 0 to t, delta of t minus delta, e to the minus j k omega 0 t, dt. Well, this delta function only takes on a non-zero value at one point, at when t is equal to delta. Um, so I only need the value of this part at exactly t equal to delta. Um, so I could rewrite this as a over t, the integral from 0 to t, delta of t minus delta, e to the minus j k omega 0 delta dt. Now this is just a constant, so it pulls out front. Um, and so I can be left with a over t e to the minus j k omega 0 delta. And then I'm just integrating the delta function over one period. Well, the integral that's integrating the delta function, that area of that integral here is just 1 now. Um, so I'm left with the following equation. So I'm left with this final answer here. This is the final answer for my a sub k coefficients. Um, so it's just a over t e to the minus j k omega 0 delta. And that's what a sub k is equal to. So this is a function of k, right? So it changes with each different value of k. Um, but all the others are just constants in there. a, t, omega 0, and delta are all just constants in this equation. So now we have the a sub k's. We have the Fourier series coefficients, right? So these are the, the ct, ct Fourier 
series coefficients. We have those and we're just going to move on now and use those to define the Fourier transform of the signal. Okay, so now I've got um, the Fourier series representation of my signal s of t because I have the a sub k coefficients and I have the value of omega zero. Um, and so I've just filled in the a sub k coefficients here, right? And now I can use that relationship um, if I've got the Fourier series, I can easily define the Fourier transform because the Fourier transform is just a series of impulses, an infinite series of impulses, where the area of each impulse is equal to 2 pi a sub k, and the location of the impulse is k omega 0, where k is the index um, associated with the Fourier series coefficient. So I just filled in my value for a sub k that I solved for previously right here, um, and then I can just translate that over to here. And so what I end up with is 2 pi a over t e to the minus j k omega 0 delta times delta of omega minus k omega 0. So now we have an equation for the Fourier transform of the signal s of t. So maybe the question is, well, can I sketch that? What is that e equation telling me about the signal? So here I've recopied my same equation, and I'm going to interpret what this, this equation is telling me about what the Fourier transform looks like. What this tells me is that I've got a series, an infinite series of impulses, and the spacing between those impulses is omega zero. So I get one at zero, I get one at omega zero, I get one at two omega zero, etc. And they go on forever. Those are impulses, so I can just start drawing them here. I'll get an impulse here, I'll get an impulse here, I'll get an impulse here, and things are going to continue out. I also get the negative impulses at the negative omega 0 and negative 2 omega 0. And again, I'm going to get an infinite series of these impulses. Okay, so what's the area associated with each of these impulses? Well, here the area, or the, yeah, the area is a complex number, right? It's 2 pi a over t e to the minus j k omega 0 delta. All right, well, k for this impulse is 0, right? So this is the k equals 0 point. This is the k equal 1 point. This is the k equal 2. This is k equal minus 1. This is k equal minus 2, right? We have an infinite series of these, so they go on forever. When k is 0, what is this equal to? When k is 0, that's 2 pi a over t times e to the minus j 0, right, because k is 0, that, right, so that's just 1. So this becomes 2 pi a over t. What about when k is equal to 1? What do I get? I get 2 pi a over t e to the minus j k, which is 1, omega 0 delta, right? And then this one here is 2 pi a over t e to the minus j k, which is 2 omega 0 delta. And similarly, this one here will be the k equal minus 1 term. So e to the, sorry, there's an a there, e to the minus j, sorry, plus j omega 0 delta, because k is minus 1. Um, and so when k is minus 1, this becomes a positive here. And then here I get, whoops, I get 2 pi a over t e to the plus j 2 omega 0 delta, right? And these continue out, right? Now the only, the area, the magnitude of these areas, right, is the same for each point. It's 2 pi a over t. And then you just get a complex uh, phasor, right, a complex exponential um, applied to each one of those, right? So these are actually complex amplitudes as we go out. Okay, so we get a series of frequencies, right? So I get, um, this says s of t consists of uh, complex exponentials at plus and minus omega 0, plus and minus 2 omega 0, plus and minus 3 omega 0, etc. plus 
the omega equals zero or DC component, right? All right, so looking at this Fourier transform tells me I have the frequencies I have involved in this are omega zero and all of its harmonics, right? Plus the DC component. Okay, so that's nice. So we've, we've solved the problem that we set out to solve. Now I want to just make one more point. So this is what we solved for. We said this um, impulse train yields this Fourier transform, right? This was the Fourier transform that we solved for. Now just suppose that A is equal to 1. So the area of each of these impulses is 1. And that delta is equal to 0, meaning that I get an impulse at 0, an impulse at t, an impulse at 2t, etc. Then this is the case that we have, right? This is the what s of t would equal in that case. And then we have the familiar pair that we've been using in our analysis of sampling, right? This is the Fourier transform of this impulse train, right? So this impulse train, which we use to model sampling in the time domain, multiplied by that, we sample in the time domain, and then that um, we convolve with the Fourier transform of that in the frequency domain. The Fourier transform of this impulse train is this impulse train, and this is what we've been using. So the pair that we solve for in this video is simply a generalization of the pair that we've already been using. So hopefully this has been a good review of how to calculate the continuous time Fourier transform of a periodic signal. Thanks for listening.